Now that we've successfully imported a mute graphic, and we've assigned a command to send to the Aspen device, and its state changes based on feedback from the Aspen device, let's move on to implementing a slider. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the mute button off the stage, and let's import the graphics that we need now to start building the interface. Remember, we need to come to the theme manager, and uh, what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to bring in an image. And to bring in an image, we, that's one of the exceptions to the theme manager. We don't have to import that in here. We can go to the image tool, and we'll drag out just a box. And it'll ask us what image would we like to import. I'm going to browse. It takes me to my Aspen iPad Getting Started folder, and I'm going to select Aspen Panel. And I will open that up. We see that it comes in, and I will click OK. And there it is. Notice it's not the right size. It's the same size of the box that we drug out. But if you right-click and you select Match Assigned Image Size, it'll size that box to the original size of the graphic. Now I'll select the arrow tool, and I'm going to move it into position. And there it is. Now, one other thing that we can do, if I double-click on this image, the properties come up. I'm going to make this a click-through image. And what that's going to do for us is this area right in here where the shadow is. If we have slider graphics, for instance, that go underneath that, I still want to be able to click on my slider graphic button through this particular graphic because we want to have the benefit of having that shadow over the graphic but we want to be able to still click on the graphic through this particular image. Next, what we want to do is let's create a new button. I'm going to click on button and we are going to create a new theme and we're going to call this LCD. And let's browse and let's import main LCD on. We're going to open that up. In comes the LCD. There's some text over it. I'll get rid of the text. And for the active image, uh, what I want to do, if once I go here, you'll notice there's nothing at all. I want to simply clone the state of the first image. And that saves me from having to re-import it. So it's a real handy little feature. OK, now I'll click OK. And notice we have an LCD for buttons. Now the reason I made it a button is we may want to for the inactive state later on, bring in the LCD off graphic. And in doing that, we can set that graphic as a button so that it responds based on an update coming from the Aspen box to show us whether we're connected or not. We can do that later on. So what we want to do at this point, let's go to buttons. We'll choose LCD, and we will pull out the LCD. And I always like to do this. I right click, and I choose match, image, match the theme image size makes it the right size. I'll grab my arrow tool and I'll slide it into position. Okay, we're almost ready now. One of the other things that we can do if we wanted to is bring in the adjusted logo. I'll do that at a later time. Now what we want to do is create a slider. So in order to do that, I'm going to bring in the image of the background track of the slider. So I'll drag out just any old size. It doesn't matter what size. And we will choose the slider image. And it is called Output Slide Track. And we also have an Input Slide Track. Let's find that. Here we go. Click Open. And notice it came in. And we can click OK. And there it is. Right click, Match Assigned Image Size. And here it is. Grab the arrow tool, it'll move it, and it's a little large. And uh, in the demo, if you want to use the exact same numbers I used, uh, for X and Y, uh, what I used was 204 by 279, and that's the position. So I'll type those in. And also, uh, for the width and height, I used 106 by 433. Okay, now we click OK. And notice our 
track adjusted to the size. That's one benefit about having an image is we can resize a ping file and since it's translucent it still looks really good against our background. So now it's positioned just where we want it. And if we don't want to bother it, we can lock its position in size. You'll notice the little locks and it will not move at this point. Now we want to create a slider. Go to gauges and sliders, create a new theme, and we just want to call this slider and we'll click OK. Notice we're not assigning an inactive or an active image to it. We're simply creating a slider theme and naming it slider and it will appear. Now what we can do is we come up here to the slider tool. Let's grab a slider and we will drag it out and let's look at the properties of this slider. Double click on it and what we have here is notice it's of theme slider. Now remember our range is from plus 60 to negative 10. So let's put those values in. Negative 10 and the max is going to be 60. Okay we're good there. Now we want to simulate feedback so we can move that slider around even when we're not connected to a box perhaps for a demo. And finally we would like to bring in a graphic. Well, this isn't going to be hidden. We want to have an image here. So let's browse for an image and let's grab the slider knob. So let's grab in out slider knob ping. Click open and you'll notice it's there. And now if we move the preview value, it will move so we can see what it's going to look like. Notice the drop shadow on the slider knob. And let's go to active and we don't want to hide it, we want to also bring in the same image. Let's click open and now we have that slider image as well for inactive and active. So when we're not touching it, it shows the image and when we do touch it, it still shows the same image. This would give you the option to change the slider. Remember in the graphic example we were changing the color of that interior line. Well you could have the different sliders here for a pressed version and an unpressed version. Okay, now that we have that, what we want to do is we want to place this slider in an area over our background track. Now this red area, you want to look at that as kind of your thumbprint. That uh, is almost the user pad, the, the area where you can touch and affect the slider and what range you can move it within. And what I used for the demo for this particular range is I have a slider knob position of um, 384 by 82 and uh, that's actually what we want to have for the X and Y. So let's do that. We want the width here to be 82 and we want the height to be 384. So you can type those in if you like. Now for the X and Y values, I want those to be uh, 172 by 319. So for X, we will type in a 172. And for Y, we will type in a 319. Okay, let's click OK. And now, you will notice that our slider is positioned directly over the track and it's centered. And the nice thing about this is this compensates for this drop shadow. If we think about this edge at the top of, of the slider knob and the bottom of the shadow as the bottom of the slider graphic, we can touch anywhere in this area. But what we want is we want this line to correctly align with these areas for the full range. So if I go to plus 60, I want the value to be plus 60 and I want this line to be there. So it's going to go outside of the track range and then down here I want this line to be negative 10. How did I know that? I simply moved these things around and uploaded the uh, file until I got them just right. I kind of had to play around. It's kind of what you have to do if you're going to be using custom graphics and uh, doing things like shadowing and things like that. 
So now let's do one last thing. Let's create a text field and um, let's create a theme and let's call this new theme uh, slider value. And we want it to be Arial and I like to use uh, about size 18 and we want to enable the shadow and we're going to use these values 2, 2 and let's try 20 for the opacity and finally uh, let's use a value of 3 for the blur and for the text 8050 we'll leave this the way it is and we'll leave it called text let's click OK now what we can do is let's come into the slider again and for indicator text not for active but when we press it let's use the slider value theme okay now that we have this slider value theme we want to be able to see that text so let's try this again let's have a width of about 80 and a width here of about 50 ah and we see the text appear right in this little area here so now look at that as we move our preview value it goes in range of our minimum of negative 10 and max 60 we can't see the bottom end of that but uh, you'll notice that it does when we finally export it let's click OK and we are ready let's go ahead and try exporting this now in the usual way uh, go into file and upload service just like we did in the last video and let's see what that looks like the file has been uploaded notice there's no control of our Aspen device we can move our slider notice off to the top left of the knob slider knob we have the value that is incrementing and decrementing as we move the slider around and it's in line with our numerical values let's go all the way down to negative 10 and there's an example of our slider working in kind of a simulation mode now let's add control